Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Whitetails AD Dynasty. Today, we start this episode with the basketball squad. We are 0-3 to start the year, and like I said last episode, just getting used to the game, getting used to these players and I think turning on real player percentage for shooting will make a huge difference. In the opener, I think I saw something that I want to experiment with. Putting Manny Pablo in the starting lineup, a true freshman. He reminds me of like a longer, I want to say not even Bradley Beal, but kind of a longer developing, you know, mid-range killer. Kind of like Carmelo Anthony early on in his days. Not as great of a shooter, but I think, you know, somebody of that type of mold, I really think he can, you know, turn into that. Now, we took on UCLA 0-3, looking for our first victory, and here we are in the fourth quarter, and King Watson definitely went to work. Started this quarter with 17 points, and we really went to him to be the closer. Here is Elias Dulock with the defensive board. Jarvis Joshua up the court to Watson, and he gets an easy layup, and that one puts him over 20 points for the first time this season. Jarvis Joshua looking for Watson again. Inside now, post up. This is Tyrone Jones. He looks inside, but an excellent backdoor caught by Elias Dulock. And now we are up by nine, 64 to 55. And here is a steal by Joshua, one of our best def perimeter defenders. And he goes coast to coast and will draw the foul on Holloway. You can just see the Whitetails are grooving here late in the fourth quarter. Here's Watson getting to the basket, tried to draw a little foul, but gets it to go anyway. He's got 23 at that point. And with under a minute left, here is Joshua looking to Watson again. He gets his three blocked, but gets his own board. He takes to the basket, gets his man off the ground, and will draw the foul. And Watson goes to the free throw line to essentially ice this game. He hits the first, and he will also hit the second. He finishes with 25 points. An excellent, an excellent rebound game for King Watson. We go on to win this game 69-63 to to get our first win with the basketball squad. A very good game here for the team. So we move over to the football team, and we have kind of a little bit of a break with the basketball schedule. Now, I'm going to pretend as though in the basketball schedule that it's obviously NBA 2K, so we're going to pretend it's two months uh, ahead. So it's December in the real calendar in that game, and it's NBA. We're going to pretend like it's August. So here we are in the middle of August. I mean, not August, October. We're going to pretend like we're in the middle of October here, and we're going to take a look at our football team as they are actually in October but we're going to follow you know the real life schedule and we take on number four Washington it started out great just in time scored a touchdown early but then after that we all fell apart number four Washington absolutely came to play on defense and Evan Coleman didn't have anywhere to throw the football after that first drive. It was not pretty. He threw two pick sixes on pretty much like the exact same identical play. And then here in the fourth quarter, tries to throw one on the run. He had a man deep, but could not get it to JT Shelley. And we end up getting blown out in this game, 59 to 20. And Washington had 651 total yards offense. I mean, they absolutely dominated and showed why they are the number four team in the country. We dropped to one and five, and now we take on Temple. And one of the more important games of the year. Why? Because we are looking for a conference invite. We already beat one MAC team. The MAC will likely invite us. But now we play an American Athletic Conference team. And I want to go into the American. So I, I think this is a game that we must win in order to get the eyes of the committee on us and hopefully get that invite. Temple is 3-2, and 2-0 two, two and oh in conference. They have a decent team. I, don't, I wouldn't say they are great. Our Darius McNamara is their quarterback. He is a senior. He has started for three years now, and he's never thrown over 13 touchdowns. Now, one thing that we could use to our advantage, and hopefully the defensive coordinator dials up some blitzes, he cannot move. He's not very mobile, 
but he does have a decent receiving core. Steven Mitchell has five touchdowns already, 37 receptions. And their defense is okay, led by Kelvin Fenner. And we will see if our team can get it done as we do go on the road at Lincoln Financial Field. Let's get this game underway. As here are the White Tails, we will start out on defense. Here is Carter back to receive the opening kickoff, and he will get tackled. And now, here we go. Can our team show up today and really make some noise? Get our name out there for the American Athletic Conference. Here is Bill James starting out the game with a carry, and we get the tackle behind the line right there. And Temple's going to be a team that is going to be incredibly balanced, so the White Tails need to come out with their best foot forward. So here on a third down, McNamara throws to the sideline. That is going to be incomplete, so we get a three and out on the opening drive, and we'll see if Coleman can bounce back from a four-interception game from Washington. Here is Jeremy Hasty who gets the first carry of the ball game. Kind of trying to switch it up a little bit. Benjamin Duke has not been able to run the ball well, between the tackles at least. So I'm going to try to get him more involved in the passing game. A third down throw is almost picked off. Brady Collins was right there. Evan Colbert almost throws his fifth interception in two games. So here's McNamara back on the field. I said he couldn't run, but look at this. They're running quarterback draws for him, and he picks up a gain of six yards. So third and three now. They're across the 50. McNamara running his receiver in motion. He throws short to Fulp, who cuts up field, and he's got the first down. It's a gain of 10. Channing Fulp is on the outside. He is not their leading receiver, but he's probably going to be involved quite a bit. Handoff to Bill James, and he gets tackled in the backfield. That's going to be number 24, Martin E. Luther, or Floyd E. Luther, what am I saying? And that's a loss of two yards, bringing it to a second and 12. McNamara has really been... Like I said, a quarterback who had to put up huge stats this year or even in his career. But here we go, trying to stop this Temple offense. And now we get him to inside the 25-yard line. But there's a nice tackle by Meech Edwards, loss of five. Third and 15, McNamara has time to throw it but runs out of time and gets rid of it. Jarek Pryor. That's a loss of one right there. It looks like Tristan Wynn was there for the tackle. He just got that ball away, and Temple settles for the three points. So Evan Coleman now back out onto the field. Here's a throw to the right side. That's going to be caught by Justin Time, and it will be a gain of nine. Time is leading us in catches and yards this year. He's going to be an important part of this, this team going forward as he does play in the slot primarily as Coleman finds his man for the first down on that throw. You know, one thing I do want to do is establish a run game, but it's hard to do it when your guys are not good blockers at all. As you see, we're throwing the ball quite a bit, and the game plan really has been switched to really throw the ball pretty much like 85% of the time because that's pretty much all we can do. So now a third and 20, Coleman looking to air this one out. He finds JT Shelley, and he's got almost a lot of that yardage back, and he gets banged up on that play. Gain of 12, and Coleman comes out here on a fourth and nine. We're out of field goal range, but we're kind of in four down territory. We'll see if we can convert here. Here's Coleman. He stops. He throws across the middle, and maybe if he would have ran that one, the safety was creeping up. He wasn't sure if he'd be able to scramble for the first, so he tries to stop and throw it, and it's incomplete. So now here is Temple back on offense. McNamara hands off to Bill James, who gets to the outside, to the 30, and tackle that about the 28-yard line, a gain of 26 right there. So now here is Temple inside the red zone almost. McNamara running the option, and he gets tackled by Han Chi, who creeps up. It's only a gain of one, though, bringing it to a third down. He comes out here with five wide. McNamara runs Bill James in motion, who's lined up at uh, receiver. He had the design wide receiver screen, and he gets rid of it to his receiver. It's a touchdown, but there's going to be a flag on the play, so this touchdown will come all the way back an excellent play design right there 
It absolutely threw us off running Bill James in motion. So now they get to replay it, and it looks like the Whitetails will be on top of this one in Temple. Negated a touchdown, and now they have to settle for three points. Penn State staying undefeated as they are the number six team in the country as now we start our next drive. And here is a throw to the right side. Here is JoJo Boom. And that one will be a gain of 21 after the missed field goal. And now we get an excellent play to start the next drive. 12 of 18 to start this game here for Evan Coleman. We bring in J.J. Applewoods for a design quarterback run on that one. We weren't going to throw the ball at all. J.J. Applewoods. An excellent mobile guy. He could also play a little receiver if we really wanted him to. Coleman looking for somebody to throw the football to. And he just sometimes doesn't have the arm to make the big throws. We have to be smarter when we're playing with Evan Coleman. And that's the thing about him. We're going to have to develop him a little bit. But I think that he will develop into something really, really nice. But I think right now, in his first year starting, he's going to have a lot of growing pains. Third and two, throw, though. Here's a throw to the right side. And A.J. Finnegan puts it on the ground. Inside the five, he tries to make a move. And it will be a fumble. You cannot do this. A.J. Finnegan is the fifth string wide receiver. And as soon as he gets in, gets the rock, he puts it on the ground. And that was clearly a fumble. So here is Temple now inside their own five to start this next drive. And that one will be a uh, first down run. As now here they are, second and five at about the 15-yard line. McNamara, all kinds of time. He throws deep, and he's got a man open. And this one will be a big gain. And now Temple is on the other side of the 50. McNamara moving in the pocket, making an excellent throw downfield to find his man. So now Temple threatening to score, really is now they throw to the left side. That's caught by Jarek Pryor. It's a 19-yard touchdown, and McNamara with an excellent, like, what, 98-yard drive right there. And Temple is on the board again. It is 10 to nothing. We have to make this game look at least interesting, but we want the win, obviously. So just about a minute to go here in the first half. Wisconsin State really needs to move the ball on offense on this drive. As now Evan Coleman is at about the 35-yard line, running Tay Evans in motion. Looks like he has the orbit screen set up a little bit, but here is Evans getting out of bounds for a gain of four. We got to be smart on this drive now as we get into the 30. Third and six, Coleman has a wide open Finnegan again. He has it. Keep the ball in your hands this time. He gets inside the 10. It's a gain of 22. So Finnegan gets it done right there. 18 of 26 for Coleman. Pretty efficient as we get it to the seven. First and goal. Throw into the right side. Finnegan fighting for the end zone. He almost gets in right there. And now here's Applewood's handoff. Benjamin Duke for the touchdown. All right, we get it back here to start uh, to end the first half. As that's how this one will go into halftime, a 10-6 ball game. Should be a good one. So now we start the second half, and really we just need to get our stuff together because we are struggling to really move the ball consistently and stop this Temple offense as here is Applewoods into the game to start the second half. He starts out with a nice scramble. So now third and three, Coleman throws, and he's got Tay Evans. He's got the first down also. One thing I do want to do is, like I said, get Tay Evans out in space. That was kind of the goal when we started this series, really just you know take advantage of the matchups that he provides as well. Coleman throws to the right side. This time it's Keyshawn Evans in the game. Keyshawn Evans and A.J. Finnegan have been involved, and they are like fifth and sixth on the wide receiver depth chart. So that is good that we get our whole team involved. First and ten, Coleman. Here's this one out deep, and he's got J.T. Shelley. A touchdown for the senior receiver. You got to love it because I just love getting everybody involved. Evan Coleman just puts a beautiful ball on JT Shelley. He just runs right past the defense. So that's very, very good to see 
and we take the lead here in the second half. How good does that sound? It feels good to say it. So here we are back out on defense and the White Tails. We have made some good defensive plays today, but we just need to be more consistent stopping the opposing offense. Here is McNamara trying to scramble and he loses one. And wow, what a tackle that time. And now we have possession right back. Evan Coleman could put this game into a two score uh, territory for the Temple offense. But he's got to be smart here, got to be efficient. Don't turn the football over. Is look at this throw to just in time, and time gets lit up right there. First and 10 again. They send the nickel blitz. Here's a throw to the flat. This is Jeremy Hasty who gets absolutely tattooed. He gets thrown into oblivion right there. Wow. Two big hits by the Temple defense, and they are looking to send a message here in the second half. And they do not like the Whitetails. I don't know what we did on the field, but they are coming out with these nasty hits. And now here we go inside the red zone. This is a third and two. Benjamin Duke next to Coleman. Quick throw. It's A.J. Finnegan who drops an easy first down. And it is now fourth and two. We are going to line up to go for it here. We bring in J.J. Applewoods. And you know it's going to probably be an option, but it's not going to work. Benjamin Duke with a tackle. What gets tackled in the backfield. Loss of three. So here is Temple now back on offense. Here is Bill James with the carry to the left side, and he gets stopped right there. It looked like Meech Edwards got in his way, and Connor Joe came up for the stop. And now looks like Temple with the flag on the play. That one will come back for a second and long, but they get it back to a third and seven. McNamara throws to the sideline, and Keegan Hagan has the five-yard reception, but he cannot pick up the first down. We need a touchdown drive here to kind of put this game not out of reach, but at least with a two-score game. Here's Jeremy Hasty. He had a lot of space. If he would have made one man miss, he could have been off for the races, off to the races. And we get it to the 43. And this is actually a fourth and one. Here is Coleman on the quarterback keeper, and he gets to about the 40. And that one will be a first down scr scramble, I guess, a read option, option keeper. And now under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Coleman has a man open. He throws deep, and he will overthrow Keyshawn Evans, who came into the game on that play. He will have to redo it now, second and ten. Here is Coleman. He throws quickly across the middle. That's Jaden Felder, the backup tight end, and he picks up the first down. You know, we do have a position group that I do want to improve, and it is tight end. I, I do like to get my tight ends involved. Here's a throw to the right side. That's going to be Daquani Jordan. But the top two tight ends right now are Jaden Felder and also Thomas James. James has been quiet today as he's not on the field right now. Here is Coleman throwing the screen pass out to Justin Time, who makes a move. Touchdown. 19 yards on the bubble screen, and Justin Time just makes a great effort to get around his defender. And the bubble screen worked that time. It's now 21 to 10. McNamara back on the field. He throws deep on the first play, and he's got Fulp on the outside. And Jacquez Thompson, this is his issue. He does give up the big play at times, and that one was a dime of a throw by McNamara. So now five wide running Mitchell, their leading receiver in motion. He's been quiet today, but he picks up about a gain of three on that jet sweep. Big time third down right here as they have missed one field goal, field goal already today. As the fourth quarter begins, McNamara in the pocket. He's going to throw to the left side. He's got Bill James, who has it only for a gain of three on that catch. And they're going to go for this now, fourth and four. I'm not sure I would have went for this here. Here's McNamara throwing to the sideline. Hagan, he was right at the first down marker, and it looks like he may have got the ball across the line. McNamara throwing to Mitchell now, and he's starting to find him, and that's a gain of 16. Inside the five, his leading receiver gets him to a first and goal. McNamara handing off. Bill James cutting back, and it's a touchdown. 
And that's a five-yard touchdown run. Temple will actually go for two on this one to make it a three-point game. We'll see if they can get in here. McNamara looks like he hands off to Bill James. James breaks the tackle and gets tackled at the one. They're going to come up just short, so they will need to score a touchdown in order to take the lead in this one. Field goals will not do. Here is Applewoods out on the field. Quick throw, and that is JT Shelley, who's having a big game today. That's a gain of 17, his third catch of the evening. He already scored deep on that Evan Coleman touchdown. As Coleman checks into the game, and look at Temple. They are right there ready for any run call. We cannot run the ball at all. So now we get it to a second and 12. Here is Evan Coleman scrambling to left side. He makes one man miss. He gets to the middle of the field to try to pick up some extra yardage. It's a gain of eight. Good way to get some yardage back. Third and one, play action fake now. Evan Coleman rolls, he throws, and that one will be caught. It's Han Chi in. Wow, our guys must really be tired because Han Chi is in the game, our starting cornerback, our cornerback one and he picks up a first down. And it looks like Chi will remain in the game in the slot too. Coleman goes right back to him, and it's a gain of three for a fourth and three. We're gonna be smart here and settle for the field goal as Temple now within eight points. They have one last shot to come back here, and they start out this drive inside the five, down by eight. They have to go 99 yards. Remember last time they went 98 yards to score. Here's McNamara, throw across the middle. He's got Channing Fope, and that one will be a gain of six. So third and four now. Temple looking like they can move the ball at any time. Here's a quick throw to Mitchell, and he's got the first down. And now here we go, Whitetails. We need a big time play, 50 seconds. They converted right there on the first down to continue this drive. Here's a quick throw to Atkins this time, and he barely picks up the first down, so the clock will stop as they hurry to the line. 44 seconds and running. Make McNamara throws to the right side, and it's Gavin Cook. It's a gain of 12. So now at the 44, that one stops the clock now. McNamara looking comfortable in the pocket. He throws across the middle. He's got Steven Mitchell. It's a gain of 15. And McNamara all of a sudden looking like Peyton Manning, how he's orchestrating the offense. Here's a deep shot down the left side. It's Channing Fulp. How do you let that happen? It's a touchdown. And another big play given up by Jacquez Thompson. We might have to make a change on the outside because Jacquez Thompson is giving up way too many plays. And now Temple has to go for two. 24-22, they need the throw here. To the right side, Jarek Pryor will get in. It's a 24 all game, 24 seconds to go. And here we go, Evan Coleman. Does he have a miracle in him? We have all three timeouts. Coleman rolls to the right side, looking to buy some time, still buying time. He throws across the middle. He's got Daquani Jordan, and he gets to about the 48. We will burn our first time out there. Six receptions for 66 yards for Jordan. He is just Mr. Consistent. Not the loudest receiver, but he gets it done. Here's a throw to the right side. This one, it's Han Chi again. A gain of 19. He's got three receptions. Maybe this is something that we should probably implement. Hanchi is getting open. 10 seconds left now. Here's Keyshawn Evans in the game, and he gets 10. That's going to put us into field goal range. We will bring in David Lewis for the game winner. This one from about 47. The kick is good. The White Tails go into Lincoln Financial and upset Temple. A huge victory here in this series for the second win of the season. 27 to 24, Evan Coleman leads an excellent game. 50 pass attempts, and he completed 34. I mean, he was efficient. He did miss a couple of throws. We had a couple of big drops, especially that A.J. Finnegan drop. A.J. Finnegan actually dropped that first down and also fumbled, <laughs> threatening to score as well. So without that, we probably would have had it probably wouldn't have been as tight, to be honest with you. But looking at, you know, how our team did, especially receiving-wise, we had over 12 
receivers in that game. 12 receivers had catches. So that is just insane. And our defense actually did not play bad. We actually did have an interception by uh, Floyd E. Luther at one point, and he got his first interception. And it was actually like late in that game. So uh, sorry I didn't show that one, but he did get his first interception of the year. Our Darius McNamara went 28 of 34, 329, two touchdowns and one interception. He was efficient. I thought they were going to run the ball more. Bill James had seven for 54, but Channing Pope was their leading receiver, seven for 112. So we get the victory, and now we look at recruiting. Now, I will show the full recruiting board next episode, but I want to show you guys a quick you know, preview of what you're going to see. You know, we have some commitments. Parker Marshman was a guard. I really need to recruit offensive linemen. We lose Robert Christensen to Charlotte, but Simba Haskins, a, a tribute to Dwayne Haskins, RIP. He uh, makes the squad here. He commits to the White Tails. I really wanted Aaron Hoffman. He was a very good offensive lineman, very versatile. I could have played him at center or guard, but our top defensive player, Trey Richards commits. So that makes me very, very excited. I'm glad to see him commit because I really need help at cornerback. As you can see, giving up some huge plays, Jacquez Thompson. We definitely need an outside corner. Maybe Trey Richards can be that come next year as a true freshman. So, so far we are two and five. We have four games remaining on the schedule. JJ Applewoods is our dual threat quarterback, but it's been a lot of Evan Coleman as well. So I'm thinking that, you know, we're going to probably ride out with Evan Coleman a whole lot this year. And I, I don't think the two quarterback system is going to be something that we rock out a lot with. I like Evan Coleman. He's very efficient, gets the ball to guys. And that's one thing that you really want just in time. Uh, Daquani Jordan and Tay Evans are leading us in receiving. And then Thomas James has been awesome as well at tight end. So I'm really enjoying what I see from Evan Coleman. I don't think he's uh, in jeopardy of losing his job or anything in season one. But at least we got a couple of wins here. Now, looking at our schedule, we actually have the toughest schedule like in the NCAA. As far as opponent records go, our opponents have the best record of any schedule. So that should show you like how tough the schedule is. We're not playing like the, the top teams, but our opponent record is amazing right now. And our defense actually isn't playing too bad, but I'm glad we got the victory today. See, our opponent record is 37 and 20, and that actually is the best record of any schedule in the NCAA right now. But the goal in year one was really to get that conference invite. So I think we may have had it now for the American. We'll see at the end of the season. I believe F FIU is in the American too. We actually have five games left on the schedule, not four. Um, so we will play FIU, see what we do there. South Alabama is 5-0. and oh. I mean, we just have some tough games. Colorado State is the only team really under 500 on our entire schedule right now. So at least we get a victory with the basketball squad, and then we get a victory also with the football squad. So a good episode here for the Whitetails AD Dynasty. Hit subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money. I got time to get it. Target on me, so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in the dash, and the stick is with it. And I hit the four or five on the wet side. But I'm from the east side, this how we slide, this how we ride, yeah, yeah, this how we ride.